Hello all and welcome to another winged review. It's probably safe to say that most people like a good book and one of my favourite authors is James Herbert, a British horror writer. I've liked him for quite a few years and seeing as I get the train to work five days a week, I've been getting through quite a few of his books over the past few months among others. So today we're going to have a look at some of the great and some of the not so great books by James Herbert, starting with the first book that I ever read of his, Nobody True. This is where it all started for me. I just picked it up off the shelf and I really liked it. It's about a bloke who finds that he can separate his spirit from his body and go flying around and does all sort of ghosty stuff, and then comes back to his body and goes on like nothing happened, and so one day when he's having one of his out-of-body experiences, he comes back to find that he's been mutilated and left for dead. He then has to travel around as a ghost trying to find out who murdered him, but as he's going around, because he's a ghost, he can't touch anything, he can't do anything, all he can do is listen. And because no one can see him, some of the secrets of his past start to come out. And there's quite a few twists in it, and it is really good. He, one of the lines that I did find quite interesting in it, once all the secrets start to come out, was when he said, was nobody true to me. It was all of the things that he thought he lived in this perfect little world, and then it all comes crashing down. It's a little bit sad, but very good read, and it just started the whole thing for me. So, very good. I then moved on to... Others. Again, very, very good. Very different from uh, Nobody True, though, but this is more about reincarnation. It, the main bloke in it, I can't remember what his name is, he it was an actor years and years ago, and he ends up going to hell once he died. Um, every now and again, angels from heaven go down to hell, and they pick one soul that they will reincarnate and give a job to. If they complete that job in their new life, then their sins are forgiven and they can go to heaven. This bloke gets the job of finding someone, but because he's reincarnated, he doesn't know of his previous life, his time in hell, or that he's got a job to do. He's not completely left to it, though. His life is sort of directed to help him towards it. Because he's got to find someone, he ends up becoming a professional investigator, trying to search for people. So he's got all the skills, knowledge, tools, and everything to help him in his task. He doesn't know who he's got to look for, but once he finds them, he will know everything. Um, and it was really good. As he's going about his normal business, he comes across a care home and he starts delving into the his history of the care home and he finds out that it's actually got a really dark secret and it's a little bit nasty and some of the stuff, apparently those others, are actually based on actual medical records of deformities that some people have had and that just, when you start reading what some of these people have got wrong with them, it's a little bit nasty, and the fact that they are real ones, or based on real ones, it really puts a new twist on it, and it is really nasty, but very, very, very good. Then I moved on to what was probably my favourite of the lot so far, The Dark. You may have heard of a film starring Sean Bean, who in that also did something completely pointless, and that was also called The Dark, but it is actually nothing to do with this. A film based on this would actually have been much better than how The Dark film actually was. But either way, with this, the Dark is pretty much an evil, malevolent force, and it's some people years ago did some sort of ritual slaughter thing, and they it's the power of the human mind being able to conjure up an evil force that travels in the darkness, and everyone that comes into contact with it pretty much becomes genocidal. And it's quite graphic in some of the deaths in this, but that's partly what makes it so great. It really gives a sense of this darkness thing is pure evil that is spreading around the planet. And some of the stuff it makes people do is horrific. This is actually the first book that has ever given me a nightmare. And that's one of the reasons why it became my favourite as soon as I'd read it. Best one so far. It was brilliant. Really scary, actually, for a book. I've got quite a vivid imagination, and this was brilliant. Then... After that, I read a few other books, and some of them were okay, some of them weren't, none of them were as good as those three. The first one that I was really disappointed with was Portent, which I don't know where that book's gone, actually. I've been looking for it for ages, it's just disappeared completely. I don't remember much about the book, all I can remember of it is that someone gets their lip bitten off. That is it. I think it's got something to do with light or beams or something to do with that, but... No, there was just something about the plot, it just didn't click with me in the same way that those ones did. It was okay, I read it quite happily, it was fine, it just wasn't as good. And as soon as I can't remember anything about it, it couldn't have made that much of an impression. But one I read fairly recently, which I'd heard some good stuff about it, so I was quite looking forward to reading it, was 
once. It's quite a big book, it's bigger than those ones, but it was okay. Um, the plot with it is it turns out there's a bloke, Tom Kindred, he finds out that all the stories of fairies, uh, elves and all that sort of stuff, pixie dust, is actually true. But in the same way, so are all the stories about ghosts, goblins, demons and all that sort of thing as well. Which sounds like it could have made a really good plot, but the main plot of it ends up just being too cliched, really. It did get a bit predictable towards the end, and how they have just had sort of, you have the, the good creatures, the pixies, the fairies and all that sort of stuff, and then the goblins and the dark creatures, had there have been more of a, a battle between the two, it probably would have been really good. But instead, they, the plot more revolved around people, and um, some of the people there's, so really, they had their own, the people had their own little plot, and it was just that they used the goblins and the pixies and all that to help them out, rather than being based on the actual pixies and the whatever fairy tale stuff. So, I mean, it was alright in itself, but my biggest problem with this book was that it was really drawn out, and I mean, really. I did try to read it once before and gave up because of how much it was drawn out. The first... 40 odd pages. It's the, a bloke, Tom Kindred, he's driving towards Castle Brecon, which is where one of his friends lives. And then he, once he's got there, they have a quick catch up, and then he walks to a small cottage nearby, and that takes 40 pages. We do get a little bit of an insight into Tom's background, his relationship with the person who lives at Castle Brecon, where he grew up in this cottage, and all that sort of thing, which was good. But when he's walking through the forest, we don't need to know every single individual flower and tree that's growing in the area. It's just way too much. There was even a point a bit later on where he goes to see someone and it actually lists every spice that they have in their spice rack. We don't need to know stuff like that. This seriously needed editing down. I did get through it, but it was a bit of a slog to finish it all the way through, and it is quite a long book, it took me about two weeks or so to get through reading it, about an hour and a half on the train every day, but had it have just not been quite as thick as it was with the whole plot and everything, it probably would have been okay, but it, it, it just needed cutting down really, that was the main complaint, plot was fine, but oh my god was it drawn out. The last one I'm really going to talk about is the one that I read last, and it's, it might be my new favourite, Overtaking the Dark, The Secrets of Quickly Hall. This was brilliant. Though it is slightly bigger than once, it's a little bit thicker, it didn't have the drawn outness that that did. This was much more focused on the characters, on the plot, and what was actually going on. Whereas with reading once, I when I was sort of at work, I was sort of walking towards the train station, and it was, mm, yeah, I might just carry on with it, I'll get to it eventually. With this, I was actually looking forward to getting back on the train and finishing it. It was really, really good. It's based in 1943, during the Second World War. Quickly Hall is a sort of a manor house in the middle of the countryside. I think it was in Somerset or somewhere. And 11 orphans were evacuated to Quickly Hall in order to escape the blitz of World War II. But although it seemed to be this nice, perfect utopia where the children were well looked after, there is a, the secrets of what happened to them. There was a flood here shortly, I think it was about two months after the orphans got to Quickly Hall, there was this massive flood killing something like 68 people, including the 11 orphans and their main carer, Augustus Quiven. But what was... The new family moved into Quickly Hall, I think it's somewhere around 2006 time, and they sort of find out about what happened with the flood, the orphans dying, um, but it turned out that the orphans were actually locked in the cellar, and that's where their bodies were found once they drowned. So as they sort of, they delve into what, why the children were down there in the first place when this flood was happening, the secrets of what actually happened, not just on that night, but throughout the entire two months while the children were there, it's a little bit nasty. I mean, there's one bit in it near the end when it starts to get towards the climax where I actually started to feel a little bit sick because of what I was reading. But it was just such a great read. And one of the things that I'm really looking forward to with this is apparently it's being made into a three-part BBC drama due to be released in October. So I'm assuming it's going to be something for Halloween. Some of the stuff that happens in this, because it involves... Uh, abuse of children, it could be a little bit dodgy, particularly with the bit that made me feel sick. I don't think they'd be able to put that on primetime TV. So how they're going to 
put that into the, f the program because if that event didn't happen, it would pretty much ruin the rest of it because that was like the turning point in what was going on. So if they can do it properly, then this is going to make a brilliant mini series. They did a very good job with Great Expectations around Christmas, and if they can do this to the same sort of standard, it is going to be really good. So I'm actually going through the Dark again at the moment to see if it will still be my favourite one or if this one's going to overtake. It was a number of years ago that I originally read the Dark, but from what I've read so far, I can see why I liked it so much at the start, but I'm going to finish it and then make my decision, but probably one of the very best. Between this and the Dark, they are, would be the two that I would say are the best. So um, I've read a few other books, Magic Car, Magic Cottage was pretty good, Fluke I really liked, um, and there was a few others that I've also read, Shrine, that was a good one. Um, but there's quite a few that I've not read yet, but of the ones that I've actually read, there are some brilliant books. If you haven't read any of his stuff, if you like horror as much like I do, then definitely give James Herbert a, a go. He has got some very, very good books. So, yeah, that's it really. He's a, still one of my favourite authors and I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of his books. See you next time.